All right, so let's get started. So yesterday we were looking at this problem. Yes, I haven't posted yesterday's lecture. I'll rec no, actually I recorded it. I haven't posted it. So I'll post it after this lecture along with this one. So the question is, find transfer function g of s is theta 2 of s over t of s. Okay. So yesterday where we got stuck was we tried to derive this from first principles. And I realized what mistake we made. And the way we avoid that mistake is to draw the free body diagram of this. Okay. So we'll do that last, actually, because it's it's important to do that so you conceptually understand what's going on. But first, let's just solve this like you would solve it by reflecting impedances, okay? And then we will use draw the free body diagram because it points out to a subtle fact that's not mentioned in your book, okay? Uh, so let's just so how do you do the transfer function of this by reflecting impedances? How do you do that? So method one is reflect impedances. And this is the approach I would expect you to follow on the exam because you just don't have time unless you're really fast to do the free body diagram. Because the free body diagram, as you will see, will get a little messy if you have like a lot of gears. Okay. So it's much easier to reflect impedances. But however, you have to understand why that technique works. Okay. It's important for your understanding. So how do you reflect impedances? So how many ways can you reflect impedances? Like, I mean, what can you do? So throw me some ideas. Forget formula, like, I mean, you can, you can use ratios, but more fundamental than that. So what do you do? Like, so he's asking for, that's the transfer function he's asking for. So you gotta reflect impedances, yes? So how can you reflect impedances? That's what I'm asking, like what? Not the technique. Yeah, you got two ways, like JP says, right? So what are the two ways, JP? So let's put some K, let's go put some numbers. I mean, like, sorry, symbols in here. Numbers are already there. Excellent. So you can reflect from here to here or from here to over to here. Yes? What do you want to do? Okay, so Chris is saying, let's reflect the map. The uh, inertia and the dampener over here. Why? What's the law? Exactly. So the reason, that's what you got to do before you start a problem, you got to think, right? Like JP and Chris are doing. So you would say, oh, wait a minute, there are two ways to do this. And then let's reflect J and D onto this axis because he's asking for the angular displacement of this axis, okay? Now, I leave it up to you to reflect this impedance back onto here and then write theta, so let's mark theta here, in terms of theta two, which you can do, yes? You'll, you should get the same answer and please do it, right? You cannot get a different answer, it's the same transfer function, right? So reflect, reflect impedances, I'm gonna reflect these two guys onto here, therefore on theta two axis, again, I'm gonna go be in the S domain, I'm gonna have S squared JEQ plus SDEQ plus KEQ times, we are on the theta two axis, equals T2 of S, okay? So this torque over here, yeah. Yes? So what, I really shouldn't write it like that. So it's, it's bad. So let me call this T2 of S, okay? So what's JEQ? What's the equivalent inertia on this axis? Yes, number of teeth on the destination shaft divided by number of teeth on the source shaft squared times the J, yes? Notice again, no numbers, only symbols, okay? Plus S, same thing for the D, what's K? EQ, what's K EQ? It's just K, let's call this K simply k times theta 2. So now we got to eliminate t2. So what's t2? So let's write our equation t1 theta, well it's t theta in this case, t times theta equals t2 theta 2, yes? And r1, so I'll put a star on this because this is where we have to be very careful. r1 theta 
equals R2 theta 2, right? So this implies uh, theta over theta 2 equals T2 over T, okay? But this implies that R1 over R2 equals theta 2 over theta. So that's, we don't want the R's, right? We want the N's, so it's N1 over N2, yes? So this is theta over theta 2, correct? So this is N2 over N1. You see that? Just be careful, right? So what's T2 in terms of T? Because that's what I want. Yes? So if you write rewrite this out, you get t, theta 2 over T equals N2 over N1 over S squared J uh, N2 over N1 squared. I mean, you can plug in numbers right even in this equation if you want, but I go one more step. I plug it in at the end. Okay? So what's N2 is 50, N1 is 25. The magnitude of these two is of these two impedances are 1. The magnitude of this guy is 4. Okay? So this is 50 over 25. Yes? Uh, so that's, I'm just going, you know, let me just plug it in. Yeah. Straight out. 2 over S squared. So this is also 2, yes, but 2 squared is 4. J is 1, yes. This is also 4, correct? Yes, K is 4. So in other words, your transfer function, you factor out of 4, you get 1 half S squared plus S plus 1. And let's check the answer. Oh, that's good. Yes, the book is correct. Okay? Okay? Any questions on that? You should get the same answer if you reflect this impedance onto this axis. Right? So I recommend you do it. Now, let's do the same problem but from first principles. That is, let's draw the free body diagram, okay? Because it's important. And it's not, it's very instructive because of what our, from our discussion yesterday. It took me like 10 minutes last night to figure this out. So let's do free body diagram, okay? And I don't expect you to do this on the exam. You're welcome to, but you will see that this method, you gotta be very careful, right? But it's a very conceptual method. So let's just pursue this. Okay? So, here is my gear R with radius R1. Okay? It's got an inertia J and a dampening D. This has got spring K. Yes? Torsional spring. Now, with respect to this radius, draw it a little to scale. That is, the number of teeth here is twice this teeth here, right? So the second fellow will be twice as big, yes? Okay? And that's the radius, or 2 Yes? So I apply a torque the clockwise direction looking in okay like that yes what are the different forces acting on this guy uh, torques not forces because we are dealing with torques and in what direction because that's the free body diagram yes so start so then there's a displacement of course theta the angular displacement, so it is in that direction as well. So tell me what are the different torques? Okay, which direction is it acting? So which direction is it? Counterclockwise. Okay, so I'm going to do just day, J theta double dot. So I'm doing time domain. Okay, what else? D, counterclockwise as well. Now, here is the tricky part. Are there any other forces, or torques, I'm sorry, acting on 
the first gear. No, it's not the speed. No, it's the so what's happening here? Are these two in contact? So there is a contact torque. Yes. Which is acting Newton's first law. Newton's third law, right? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? So I'm going to arbitrarily pick the direction of this contact torque. All right. It's going to act in one direction on R1 and the opposing direction on R2. Is that not R2? Well, it's going to act one direction on gear one and opposing direction on gear two. Is that clear? And that is not evident at all in this approach. Yeah. Yes, exactly. JP is right. They will cancel. They better cancel. And that the cancellation is very important because if you blindly use this, it will not cancel. Because this doesn't take into account the fact that, that's why I put a star on this, that these two are rotating in opposite directions. So in reality, let me write that down right now since JP spotted it, R1 theta 1 should be negative R2 theta 2 because they're rotating in opposite directions, okay? And that may not be important. Okay, it is important, right? In this technique, it just doesn't matter. So, but you understand where this is from physics, okay? Physics is the ultimate, right? Science. Well, there's math, but then there's physics. There's math, physics, chemistry a little bit down, and then engineering is like down here, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an expression for the torque. There is a, the good news is there is a tangential force here, but it's at 90 degrees to this radius, yes? So the torque is R1 times that FC, the contact force. Okay, so it's going to act in this direction, R1 times FC. Is that clear? I arbitrarily picked that direction. But the bottom line is, well, the reason why I picked it that way is this guy is rotating this way. Yes, that means on this fellow, it's going to act opposite, okay, like that. Is that clear? And they are going to cancel, like JP said but it's only evident from the free body diagram. Is that clear? Okay, so let's go back now, finish up the free body diagram because we're not done with this guy. So what's going on with this fellow? So what about this guy? What are the different forces? Hmm? So there is a torque here, yes? Oh, let's see, is it? I don't know. So which way is this guy rotating? This fellow is rotating this way, right? Yes? Correct? Yes? So, <laughs> well, nobody's saying yes. It's like, uh, uh, thank you. All right, where's K acting? Clockwise, K theta, yes? And this is theta 2, I'm sorry. Okay? It's not theta. So, now let's write the equations of motion. At uh, theta, what do you get? You have j theta double dot plus d theta dot equals the input plus this fellow. Yes? Now, at theta 2, what do you get? K theta 2 plus R2 FC equals T2. Yes? But R1 theta 1 equals minus R2 theta 2. Yes? Uh, so we got to eliminate FC, right? So let's do this. This is correct, but let's eliminate FC first. So 1, 2... So 2 implies that R2FC equals T2 minus K theta 2. Yes. 
uh, now mm, but uh, uh, let's see r1 theta 1 equals minus r2 theta 2 so what do we want we want uh, g is what theta 2 over t yes so we got to eliminate let's see theta 1 and t2 yes and t2 this doesn't change computed this here uh, t2 is n2 over n1 times t yes so let's use all this uh, let's do this so that's what it is we want this okay so let's start doing all the simplifications and then once we get it into the once you get theta 2s and t's, then we'll take it into the S domain, okay? Therefore, hopefully I didn't screw up my signs. Uh, 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 so t, this is good. Plus r1 fc, this is from 1. Mm, so let me, actually, let me do this. Therefore, 2 implies, uh, let's see. Theta 2 is good, so Fc equals okay. uh, 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 uh. Theta T2 minus K Theta 2 over R2, yes? Therefore, 1 implies J Theta double dot plus d theta dot equals plus r times t2 minus k theta 2 uh, let's see r r r1 over r2 yes okay but the whole point is let's see the k is there we need to eliminate T2. We'll do that shortly. So you get J theta double dot plus D theta dot equals. Yeah, no, it's right in the right direction. Wait a minute. Let's go back here. No, it's right. It's in the, it's in the right direction. That's what I'm going to. Yeah, that's correct. If not, we'll get a negative sign extra negative sign so we screw up our direction somewhere so this is r1 over r2 t2 minus k theta 2 yes but going back here uh, r1 over r2 negative r1 over r2 is theta 1 over theta 2 in other words this is equal to n1 over n2 yes So this is j theta double dot plus d theta dot equals tau of t minus n1 over n2 yes and i'm sure and i screwed up my sign somewhere okay because i mean, these are canceling so what i'll do is i'll finish this up after lecture and i'll put it in all right because i did this last night i don't expect you to do it this way okay but this is where this is how you would do it using a free body diagram. It's because of this contact force. Okay. So, finish this up. Uh, leave some space. I don't want to think about it right now. Okay. Oops. I don't need that. So, your first exam is on uh, Friday. Is it Friday or Thursday? Yeah, Friday. So, what's going to be covered on the exam? So, on the exam... So exam one Friday is going to be number one, Laplace transforms. Number two, uh, transfer functions. There you go, that's what I was looking for. So there are three kinds of transfer functions I can ask. Uh, translational, oh, no, I'm always going to mechanical, electrical, and then uh, mechanical, so translational mechanical, 
and rotational mechanical okay basically this will involve gears okay and as an example let's do one right so here is a review for example No, let's try 120. All right, so here are some examples, okay? So let's just do one. Maybe this is a next homework problem, but that's fine. Okay, so for the rotational, here's an example. For the rotational mechanical system with gears shown, find the transfer function. Right. So, G of S equals theta 3 over T, okay? So, and you can easily mark this in the sense, oh, there. here is tau, I mean theta. So, let's call this, let's call this 1, one, all right, so T1, T1, just to keep it consistent. Uh, this is torque two, this is theta two, and this is torque three, and there's theta three, okay? So the directions are correct. So, all right, so how would you do this? There are many ways to do this, all right? So what's the approach, what's the preferred approach? Two, yes, reflect all the impedances to which axis? Theta 3, that's it, okay? So reflect all impedances to theta 3, and if I was asking for theta 2, you would reflect this guy onto theta 2, this guy onto theta 2, yes? Just depends on what I'm asking, right? So reflect all impedances onto theta 3. Okay, because that's what is being asked for. So S squared J E Q plus S D E Q plus K times theta 3 of S equals T3 of S, right? All right, so let's go. So what's J E Q? There are no numbers here, I believe. Yeah, there aren't any. That's fine. So what's J E Q? Systematically, right? So if you notice, all these gears have inertia and dampening associated with them. So what I recommend you do for this problem is basically, it's going to be messy if you try to write this as one expression. So when you give me this answer, let's say I ask you this problem on the exam, just tell me what the JEQ is, the DEQ is, right? And what T3 is in terms of T1, right? So in other words, this, oops, I'm sorry. So this is what I'd expect you to do. This implies, uh, let's do T3 first, okay? In the sense, what is T3 in terms of T1? So for that, uh, let's do, again, R1 theta 1 is, for now, we can just deal with the magnitudes, right? So I'll put a star on this, R2 theta 2. This implies R1 over R2 over theta 2 over theta 1, which is equal to N1 over N2. Now, uh, then T1 theta 1 equals T2 theta 2, which implies T1 over T2 equals theta 2 over theta 1 equals N1 over N2. Yes? Therefore, You have the torque on this. Yes, let me just write it out. This implies T2 
is n2 over n1 times t1 that makes sense because if n2 is bigger than n1 the torque is amplified yes now based on this expression what is the relationship between t3 and t2 therefore how is t3 related to t2 Yes, that's right. N4, like Chris said, N4, N3 times T2. Therefore, uh, let's call this 1 and 2. So I did this on the side. You could say this is my rough work. And there it goes. Just crashed. Mm, I don't like it. All right, so uh, simplify that, like in the sense, let me restart my journal editor. Hopefully, it's not completely hosed. Okay, it's not. Therefore, 1 and 2 imply T3 is N4 over N3, N2 over N1, T1. Yes? Therefore, we have theta 3 over T3, actually theta 3 over T1. Isn't that what we want? Yes. So we have N4 over N3 n2 over n1 yes over s squared jeq plus sdeq plus k eq is that a k no there is no k all right so k eq is zero there is that clear Yeah, so let's reflect. We're not done. So let's reflect all the impedances, right? So we got to, let me zoom out. So here, uh, let's do JEQ. So what's JEQ? So what is the equivalent impedance on this shaft? So I can try zooming in a little bit more. 75%. Okay, so let's just look at it first. So what's the equivalent impedance on this shaft? What is it? Is this really boring? If it's boring, answer should come out, right? So what is it? I'll write it here and then I'll copy it down there. So what's JEQ? On this shaft. I'm not going to do it if you're expecting me to do it because you have to do it. You should know how to do this, right? So what's? Yeah, you can. That's fine. You can start with J5. So how? Yes. Okay. So what's your name? Sorry. So is Jacob? What Jacob is saying is clear, right? J5 plus J4 add. It does not get amplified by any gear ratio. Because this gear here is connected to shaft 3, so is the gear over here. Is that clear? So J5 plus J4 plus J3, does J3 get amplified? By what ratio? All right. Uh, is it done? Is it just N4 over N3? No. Yeah, this is correct. It's J4. No, not J4, sorry. J3 is on this shaft, all right? To go to this shaft, you have to go through these two gears. So it's N4 over N3 is correct, but I'm saying is it simply N4 over N3? Squared, like Sam said. Remember the squared? The last lecture I put it in red. Okay? Don't forget the squared. Okay? All right, keep going. Okay, so Jacob's right. So let me just modify this. Plus J2 plus J3 times N4 over N3 squared, right? N2, perfect. N2, N4 over N1, N3 squared. So it seems like only Jacob and Sam are the only people in the class who get this. All right. That's not good. 
So is this reflection of impedances? Let me uh, let me move this guy over here. So let me rewrite it. Okay. So J E Q is J five plus J four plus J two plus J three. This whole thing N four over N three squared um, plus J one. I'm still going to run room. Plus J1 times N1 N4 over, no, no. Number of teeth on the destination shaft. So it's N2 N4 over N1 N3. Come on. Come on. Square. There. Yay. Right. Let's look at this. Move this. Okay, so this is T1, theta 1, T2, theta 2, theta 3, T3. Okay? What spring constant? There are no springs here. Yeah, but it's KEQ, so I made KEQ equal to 0. It's not a formula, it's an expression, right? N4 over N3 squared, N2, N4 over N1, N3. Okay, so let's look at this. This KEQ, there is no K, so this becomes zero here. All right? Okay. So, reflecting impedances onto this axis, J5 and J4 simply add. Okay, they don't go through any gears. But J2, which is the impedance associated with this gear, and J3, which is the impedance associated with this N3 gear, are kind of on this, this shaft. They add up, yes? But when you reflect this onto here, they go they go through N4 over N3, but you have to square it, okay? Plus, J1 first goes to this axis, which is N2 over N1 squared. But then that net impedance goes to this axis, which is N4 over N3 squared, right? So basically, here there is uh, actually no. This is the right expression, right? Because you can't really add J1 onto this axis. It's not. It's not on this axis. So we're not done. So JEQ is J5 plus J4. The same thing. Plus J2 plus J3. Number of teeth on the destination shaft divided by the number of teeth on the source shaft squared plus J1 times N2, N4, well, N2 over N1 squared, times N4 over N3, the whole square, okay? This is just your J. Now, what about your D? Is D like kind of the exact same thing? Are we missing Ds anywhere? No, right? I mean, this has a dampener, 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 yes? So DEQ is the same thing, in the sense, it's the same expression. That's not D5, it's D4. Any questions on this? All right, so this is your final answer, in the sense. Like, all symbols it's very nice okay and that's it you can't do anything more I mean you can plug it in but there's no point right no numbers okay so just be careful of how you reflect don't forget impedances don't forget dampeners right? just pay attention so yeah I don't that's a good question so Tim asked for the Laplace part do we get the two tables I don't know in the sense if I ask you to find Laplace transforms, I'll give it to you, all right? But um, it depends on what kind of question I ask. So most likely, yes, you will get the two tables, but I don't know what kind of question I'm going to ask. Actually, I know one question I'm already going to ask, but I'm not going to tell you what it is, right? All right, fine. I can give you a Laplace transform. I can ask you to find the circuit equivalent of it. 
So you I'll write it down. So an example is draw the circuit corresponding and spell to the following transfer function. alpha over s plus beta okay i would ask you to draw a mechanical system corresponding to this so in that way the table okay how about this i will give you the table but it's not really going to help you right? if you don't understand the conceptual so this is how i test concepts right? do you really understand what does it mean to find a transfer function so in this case i'll even say this is uh, v out over V in. I'll even give you that. Right? So it's a ratio of voltages. Because remember, a transfer function can be voltage to current, current to voltage, current to current. Right? There's no unique answer to this, by the way. So what I'll check is, well, how you get it. Right? Because you can't guess. You might get lucky and get it right, but then that's not. So you can't just write an answer. Right? I have to see your thinking. That's how you get partial credit. Yeah. And if your thinking is flawed, then you don't get partial credit. Right? How can your thinking be flawed? Okay, so let me try solving this. Since how would I solve it? Okay, so here's a solution. So V naught of S over V in of S is alpha over S plus beta. Yes? So V naught of S over V in of S alpha beta or 1 plus s over beta. So I'm assuming beta is not equal to 0. It's a valid assumption. So in other words, actually, this is a synthesis problem. It's not an analysis problem in some ways. So you really have to think. It's Trust me, it's not hard. Right. So step by step, OK? Have you seen this before? This kind of a transfer function? OK, let me ask you this. So think. So it's electrical, OK? What kind of elements do you know in electrical? Resistor, capacitor, inductor. Question is, which ones are you going to use? So that's the first thing. So which ones are you going to use? Why resistor capacitor? Chris is right. Why not capacitor inductor? So Chris is right. Resistor capacitor is a way to go. But why? That's the crux of the problem. How does, or Chris, let me ask you, how did you think about it? Like, what was going through your mind? Okay, capacitor is a voltage dependent device. That's a good way to think about it. But that's not how I want you to think about it. In the sense, that's nothing wrong with that, right? I want you to recalibrate your thinking. When I look at this, the first thing which comes to my mind is, what is the order of this transfer function? What's the order of the denominator? Huh? It's first order. So will an LC circuit work for this? No. Second order. Bam. That eliminates like, so what are the first order systems? So adding to what Chris said, there's a derivative relationship, right? What is first order? RC, RL. That's it. So that's so in all these synthesis problems, which you will run into industry, there is one. So it's asking the right question. Okay? And that takes a lot of experience. So Einstein, when he came up with his theory of relativity, you know how Einstein came up with the theory of relativity? You ever wondered how he, I mean, something great, right? How did he think about it? No, he wasn't actually checking patterns on clocks. That's a good thing. That's like an old wife's tale. That's not what he was actually doing. So what he was actually doing was he was looking at Maxwell's equations. So the theory of relativity is actually a consequence of Maxwell's equations. So he kind of asked like the right question to Maxwell's equations. Right? So you're kind of doing what uh, Einstein's doing, right? In the sense, at a, at a much lower level. Right? So it's like, uh, what is the order of this transfer function? It's one, and that'll give you, okay, it's RCRL. Is that clear? So getting that question 
what is the order of this transfer function is where your thinking is and it takes a lot of practice okay so let's pick rc just for the hell of it you could pick rl right so like i said there's no unique answer to this and what this question actually doesn't tell you is actually if there is an op amp in here this could have a gain right if there is a gain depending on alpha beta you'll have an op amp it's another thing So V in of S, since I put S here, what's the impedance of the capacitor? What? I mean, if you struggle with this, you're screwed on the exam, right? What's the impedance of the capacitor? Yeah, you should know that. Boom, like Peter said. What do I see? Okay. Now, let's see if this works, all right? V, not v of S over V in of S is what? By voltage divider, since we're in the S domain. Yes? This works. So multiply and divide by SC. Correct? Yeah? So this is, so I can write this. Uh, let me put it, in, actually, let me just leave it as it is. So let's see. Uh, this guy. It's almost of this form, yes? In other words, one over beta is RC, correct? But I'm missing this alpha over beta. So let's see if I can fix that. Any, any ideas? There are many ways to fix that. Huh? Uh, does it work? Let's see. So one solution that Jacob said is, so this implies actually beta is one over RC, yes? So alpha is RC, so this does work, yes? So that's fine. I'll accept that as a solution, right? Because this is a synthesis problem, there's no right answer. The point I want to test, how will I score points? How will you score points? If you write this, half the problem is done. Let's say you put an LC circuit here, I'll give you zero. Yeah. Because it shows me that you don't understand that LC gives you second order. This is not second order, right? Don't expect partial credit. The whole point of partial credit is to check your thinking, right? It's not to make you pass the course. I'm not here to make you pass the course. Right? And again, if you don't pass the course, it has nothing to do with your intelligence, right? Get that in your head. It just means you have to understand these concepts better. Just because you can't do this stuff doesn't mean you're not smart. That's, at Berkeley, that's how we would be classified. That's stupid. Right? So just, uh, you got to really cal recalibrate your thinking. That's the point of going to college. Right? If you rec recalibrate your thinking right, then as you graduate from college, you'll get a good job. You won't get into debt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? If you go to college, you get a job. No, right? That's not why you go to college. Trust me. You don't go to college, you get a job at the end. It's to recalibrate your thinking. All right, so another solution. Okay, I'll give you some other solutions. You can also do this, right? You can define the output voltage across the resistor, yes? All right, so let me redraw it like so. You know, more familiar way in the sense of a high pass filter. Remember this guy from 2070? Vaguely. So here is V naught of S. Here is V in of S. I mean, try this. Okay. What does this give? Or put an op amp, right? If you do, if you want to manipulate your alpha. But well, this is fine. This is a fine answer. Okay. Now, what if beta is equal to zero? That's stupid, right? It's alpha, I mean, it's trivial. It's not stupid, sorry. It's alpha over S, correct? What kind of a circuit gives me alpha over S? What kind of operation is one over S in the time domain? Huh? Transfer function. Laplace transform of U of T is one over S is not a transfer function. 
So this is where even if I give the tables, it won't help you. Maybe I should ask that question. What kind of a time domain operation is 1 over S? Integration. So you need an op amp integrator with a non-unity gain is alpha over S. So again, guys, these are the kind of questions I'll ask on the exam. It's to see if you can, if your thinking is getting recalibrated. All right. So think. All right, so what I'll do now is, well, we're out of time. So I'll finish up this sign error, and I'll post this lecture online. Uh, give me like uh, 10 minutes or something after lecture to finish it up. So, yeah. So get ready for your exam, and I will see you Friday.